Merhabalar. Hi, I would like to welcome you. Welcome. So this was our last screening and our last panel session. My name is Ekrem Bora Bute. I'm from the Subtitles magazine and I pro pro prepared this session together with my co colleague and we're doing the closing session today. Well, about the movie, we have our director Zeynep Dadar and our director Asla Dadar together with us on the session. So we'll be just chatting and if you have any questions, of course I'll be receiving the questions. That's what we will be do, doing. So I'll be starting first. So, who is this Kömürcüyan? Hi. Thank you so much for coming. Yes. We have been collaborating with Altyazı Subtitles magazine. This, these are just our family friends. We are growing up together. Thank you so much for including our movie today our schedule and I'd like to also ex express my gratitude to Maruf team, to the foreign team because we always forget, forget who is Kömür Cihan. Of course, let me tell you, Aslı is at the same time as a producer of this film. So, if she is obsessed with a movie, if she is obsessed, then she's just saving the movie at the same time. It's the savior of the movie, we won't be entering the details, but developing a documentary if you want to do a documentary, you have to create the uh, conditions, economic uh, conditions. I'm doing both fiction and documentary. This type of creative, creative creation is important in Turkey. This is one of the things that I follow in Turkey. There are a lot of documentary producers. Three women, Asla Datak, Zeynep Ekbekci, Pınar Bacı, has been working on this project since the beginning. They believed in this and they do this since the beginning and at the same time. Well, maybe they neglected some friends and it's like they are convinced somehow because they didn't want them to go crazy. So this is being realized thanks to some people, thanks to people who believed in us. Maybe you know how hard it is to do in this fiction, in this documentary. You cannot just grab a camera and get out on the streets. It's not shooting a documentary. It's more than that. It's beyond that. Sorry that I started from a different different point of view. Thank you so much for pronouncing the other names. Maybe I can extend my question. Of course. This is a very open movie. We can see a lot of stuff going on at the same time. There's a text, there's a narrator, there is a date. At the same time we can say that there is Istanbul and there is a text, it is guiding us, as you can see. So it's good to start from there. I believe it will be comfortable to start from there. Who is Kumarjian? How did you meet that? And from the moment you met. So could you please elaborate this period? Kumarjian is a person who lived in uh, Istanbul in the 17th century a very prominent uh, translator and intellectual from Armenian collective and he has a inventory about the fires in Istanbul and in this book he's talking about the history of Istanbul in 17th century he completes in 30 years. I hope the movie gets completed before 30 years. It's 50 pages or something. The book is incredible, but it's a very dense book. Cemal Kafadar and Suna Kafadar t 
talked to me about this book, Jamal has been my guide, my friend for a long time. He knows about my love for Istanbul, he knows about my interests, and he knows my interests about taking a look at relationship with, with movie and history. He proposed me this book, and this book will make a great movie, he said. Yes, that was the time when this flame sparked. Well, I'd like to give the floor to Asla. After it turned into a movie, how was the process? Could you please just talk about this? I'd like to welcome you all. And at the same time, I would like to thank to Subtitles Art as a Magazine team and especially to Marif team forum team. I am an art director. What do I do? I do feature movies and I design feature movies with director. I am the co-creator of this fictional world. So in this documentary, I became a producer. I became a producer on the way. I sort of fell into that. Uh, I was familiar with the designer of the production and I learned how different it could be, especially in in a city like in Istanbul. I fell out the paths, labyrinths, I tried to visualize. I have this beautiful director and I have my sister, as well as being my sister, of course. I started out with them. It is fascinating since Istanbul is a marvelous place to be as an art director. You can take a look, you can discover every corner, you can take a reference, you can use as a decor, decorum for your next assignment. Istanbul offers you a lot of data. At the same time, I see that my sister just wanted to take a look at Istanbul, just to discover and establish new roads. It was like a translation project for us. It was like a helping out to her. Translation. I believe this is very valuable that you say it's a translation. Yes. The movie is opening up itself to some other type of translations. Yes, of course, it's a gaze. Gaze on Istanbul. Of course, we are gathering here around the Kent Cinema, City Cinema. This is the closing movie of these two days programs. This was a gaze to movie, thinking about city we have been talking about this today maybe we can talk about the since i first saw first watched i've been thinking about as i said to zeynep i had this sensation of tamponer tamponer the author tamponer taking a look at istanbul has its own myth has its own history, mythology. It, by itself, it is very much related with the topography of the city, where you can gaze Bosphorus, the city, the sea, everything. When you hear the, in the text of Kumergian, together, including all this, I'd like to ask, maybe we can include when how how did you really talk about this movie so it means that also transforming this heritage into something how was your approach for this so when you are talking about this uh, opening this heritage what was your key point So 
so what makes this book is a good adaptation to cinema why did Jamal tell me this I have two names on my mind one is navigation navigating means it is like navigating in waters in Bosphorus another meaning could be as we know in Turkish it means watching so this word has two meanings to it so I imagine it is like an imagining reimagining Istanbul as a water city it is the experience of taking a look at the city when you transfer it so how can you construct a visual language it was a important part sometimes your story is important sometimes the form is important maybe translation in or adaptation for adaptation we use translation why because we are adapting Kumudrian's text it was not adapting this text as in per se it was just a point of inspiration for us where do i stand in istanbul of today how can i relate myself to ways of seeing and the concept of city then created these layers if you have any questions from the whole from the listeners audience please do not hesitate if you do not have any questions i can continue well, I'd like to talk to Asli once again. Asli, two of you together more than asking what does an art director do? This is all about a co director, um, artistic direction. So sometimes it is realistic, sometimes it is fantastic. When you think about with all this heritage, we are thinking about. Uh, 350 years of time period of time when you are establishing re-establishing those scenes working from that point of view could you please just elaborate a little bit on that well in this sense in this all these creative adventure art director or visual director we have two directors you have to understand what they're trying to do uh, visually it's like helping them out so we have do two creative teams visual director and arts director so as a result Zeynep is visualizing a world that she wants to see well she needs to understand we have to comprehend and contribute as an art director what that's our job as an art director then co-creating it together well creator and director of this movie has their own aesthetic choices so what can we do in this sense Istanbul has these cinematographic choices opportunities so before the shooting period there is a route that we have to create that's what we see in the back side it's like a decorum it is something that we can use you they offer you this layers all with the cinematography well in the root of Comirjian when we continue as a creative team Fuller and Hayes well we are following their roots we are following their route so it's like believing in the power of cinema it's like co-creating, collaborating. So let me tell you something concrete. Florana, visual director, and our Asli Dadak Barish Yamas. Thank you so much to our art department. I just said two things. Floran, could you please create a flowing frame, something that flows without cutting this camera 
It's like watching, gazing the Bosphorus. When you're gazing Bosphorus, that sensation of undividedness. And in Kumurjian's text, we see something like that. Sometimes they talk about this. Uh, he transcends his body. He starts writing this in um, 16th century. Uh, the, I believe that this is a point of Sarai Burna. Uh, he is telling that I am gazing top kapu in my boat. Uh, geographically, geographically, it's not possible. When we are uh, studying the maps, we say no. So uh, it's like he is seeing a drone. He is seeing through the eyes of drone. He is just approximating to top kapu palace, and he's offering us something we can't see. So it is invisible to the eye, something we can't see. It is, the original name is different. Some things we can only see with the help of Novi. So for from Fularan, I ask one thing. How can we create this? How can we ascend? Uh, so, and Aslu and Barish, I ask you one thing I said. In the frame, just give me a cue, just give me something, just let me follow you. Sometimes uh, I didn't, it's not important if where you go, how you go, it's important that you flow, where are we at? It's like an experience, something like an experience. And they told me this yellow raincoat, it's like a cliche, but at the same time in Istanbul, you will see it's something, it's like a cliche. We needed that cliche, art department. It's, it's like a color, it's like a color in the frame. Um, maybe it draws our attention back to the frame. And from the visual department, we can, we can say it's like a work, it's like a work. Well, multilayerism. Let's talk about this multilayerism. As we said before, the movie opens itself up to the weavers. It is not lecturing. It is giving opportunities. It is using these areas, gray areas. Sometimes it is more inclined to fantastic. It directs to perception uh, sometimes it is more realistic than expected so I have this question of course it's a multi-layered thing uh, from uh, on one hand we can say that it is something that we use as movie writers but we can freely say that use it the reason is we can only narrate Istanbul like this. This is the impression that I have of Istanbul. Yeah, I, I have to ask this from the point of narrator. There is a narrator, and uh, there is Kumurjian, there is a director, and there is a history. And on the other hand, we have a narrator, and narrator is cut out. There are visitors, there are guests, there are actors, actresses. So there is a dialogue. Dialogue is important. So who is the narrator of this movie? Is not my question, of course, certainly, but what's your take on that, Zeynep? We studied a lot. We studied a lot, like, for three years. For three years, we shot at three neighborhoods, and we have seen, we studied archives. Do they have pictures? Do they have miniatures of these streets? What do we have? How can I show? I have to know this. Where is this part? What type of stories do they have? I have to understand. We we encountered a form, but what can we put in this space? Uh, how can we convey it? Convey it, what Kumurjian is narrating. I'm only narrating his root. So about these layers, you have seen balats and you see bricks behind these bricks, you see a well from Byzantine times, and you see a, a building of aluminium. 
it's all there it is all there you don't have to do anything the city has its own layer sometimes it gives us a very bad sensation as like a sense of destruction sometimes it gives you a hope a hope and opportunity a sense of hope and uh, opportunity these were the two dominant feelings so in response to your question in their life intellectually I don't really believe in one message I narrated and that is the message neither as a person nor as an audience I don't believe it I believe in dialogues I believe in multi narratives I believe for example there is a voice in the documentaries and you always get uh, convinced to their messages no I don't believe that these dominant voice so it's like a question to the audience and the answer gets from the audience so it's like a dialogue between these two so maybe it's the tiring movie but maybe you can watch the movies you can relate to these movies differently so what type of movie should have I watched or what type of movie do I want to watch so this is like the voice of the audience that's what i say that's what i think yes i uh, i agree totally i'm asking the whole if you have any questions so well do you do we have a question well thank you so much yes i would like to i would like to listen to more about this preparation phase when you are navigating through these neighborhoods all these historical places sites when you are getting a close action close look at these buildings of course there are limitations to these movies maybe it's more than it can fit into these movies there is a narrative to this movie so in this investigation period so what type of Istanbul discovery did you make? So what was what didn't fit in this movie? How? Um, so on this road, on this journey that you embarked to produce as a movie, I would like to I'd like to listen to your relationship with Istanbul. How did it uh, transfer? That's just I want to hear more about this. So what I asked uh, us, uh, we have so many data, so many hard disk. So yes. Well, joking aside, as I said, on other platforms, how we can evaluate all these documents. It's a very serious and large archiva. Last year in Axanat, we arranged an exhibition that's called Prison. Together with the scenes with the water, I connected. It was like a five minutes. And about on this five minutes, Erdem Helvacoğlu made a design and on this exhibition area it converted into an installation so the um, the material that we collected um, well there are things that we are not using it's like it is like an extension of the relationship that we have with Istanbul it can be construction of a new exhibition or something else because we, we have materials more than enough i mean i believe well um well zainab and me myself have a very specific unique relationship that we establish with istanbul when we see ourselves in the role of art director of course we can see points something that comes up for all these creative parts um, creators Istanbul is a blessing Istanbul is a blessing 
in Eminönü, you can see in that crowd. You can enter to that inn. I've been doing that for the last 22 years. But in the end, I find an inn that I haven't seen before. It is very impressive in that relationship. In the pre-production, you are navigating through those inns and we are seeing as the basketeers and that hundred years ago it was a basket seller's place and it was it is still basket seller's place when they're talking about coffee place it is still a coffee place after hundred years we can see that it is done in the same place at the same pace it is really important when we see the transformation of Istanbul it is also very important in a point where we lose everything. I'm not saying it in a nost from a nostalgic point of view. We have all these textures. We are losing the textures. We became memoryless when we take a look at a uh, walk on the East Light Street. I can no longer remember the bookstores that or used to be there. It is closed, but we do not know what is there. This is about following a movie of Istanbul. It was very exciting. So I go to Eminönü district in order to just relax myself. No one would believe it, I'm sure, but yes, Eminönü is important, but especially in all these, in all the books of Kömürcüyan, Surici district is a place that we do not live. Maybe, maybe there are people who grew up in Eminönü Rami. We are not natives of Istanbul either. So when you are even born in Rami, you don't live in Rami. The center of the city moved to another place. What happened to Suriçi of Istanbul? That's the question. All that line, all that line looks different. I didn't know. I didn't know before making this movie. I didn't know. I didn't know its relationship with Balat. I believe it is. It is like you cross the bridge. You cross the Balat from Kadir Has University and you proceed to Edirne Kapu and then you go to Yeni Kapu. I didn't have that route. Now I have that route. So it is like a comprehension of it's like a comprehension of Istanbul. Zeytinburnu. So I am reshaping, remodeling, remapping Istanbul in my head. As Asla says, it's like an adventure following this route map. But what type of map do we have? So this is um this is the creation. This is the question that we can ask. So our perception of Istanbul has changed a lot. So maybe we can continue from that point. Well, in the movie, there is a narrator. The movie has an issue with time from the first minute you understand it's talking about istanbul but there's a voice that talks us from 17th century well in a just a word you see 350 years i see i think about the opening part of this movie there's an iconic istanbul image and also we see the transformational part it's something that we cannot detect. 
I believe I myself am from Istanbul. It is something that pains us, it is something that hurts us because there is a sense of losing, sense of losing these Armenian graves. So we see 6th and 7th October and in Taksim we, we see Gizi. So it's a sen sensation of losing and there's also a sensation of heritage, that's what we see. Movie creates a main sensation. That's the main sensation. It gives you a sense of heritage and sense of losing, loss. It tells a lot about our lives. Taking a gaze at Istanbul is something like that, and that's what I think. Istanbul, gazing Istanbul, being in Istanbul together with all the nostalgia, it is nostalgic, it is it's pa passing time with Istanbul. This is like that, so it's like a geographical thing. At the same time, it is something, something that we create. Well, that's why I gave Tampanar example. In that novel, Huzur, they get on the boats, so visible or invisible, they make you dream about Istanbul. Maybe they close their eyes, listen to Istanbul. Maybe they're thinking about the hills of Istanbul. It is about gazing Istanbul. So I don't, I don't really have a question. It's just like my head is wandering. So I'm just talking. Thank you. I'm sorry. I'd like to thank our translators. Well, they're doing a great job. Thank you so much to our translators. And you had to translate this. Well, my name is Sana from Kadiras University. My question is this something that is very similar to Bura's comment. When I'm watching the movie, when I take a look at Istanbul, Byzant Byzantinian times, when I see that aluminium, yes, I see a sensation, I feel a sensation of loss, but my sensation is rather than a loss. It is like you see it, there is a transformation through time and this transformation is not a loss. It is like something to watch, something to gaze, something to follow. So we need to be open to that transformation. That's the sensation that I have from the movie. So what do you think about? What's your take on this perspective? I believe it's a very positive perspective for us. Yes, it's both. I believe nostalgia. Nostalgia word is a very contaminated word. We can. There is no such thing as we cannot miss the past. We can miss the past, but past is not a perfect and painless and sinless place. So nostalgia is a problematic word because we are using it that way. Of course, we can request. We can wish to see another Istanbul. We can have the sensations of loss. But on the other hand, just like you say, the sensation. That was my phrase. This city, this city has so transformed, has been transformed from all of the years. So documenting this is important. Touching on this is important, but we have to also make this special. And so this is, uh, this change is of magnitude that cannot be compared to any other thing. So I'm saying this scientifically, from a scientific point of view, I research it myself, so it's a very fundamental change. That brings us to day. Yeah, we can talk about this. We can miss the 
past we can be excited uh, for the future for today gaze perception uh, observation is important yes maybe we are heartbroken maybe we are hopeless maybe we can say we love Istanbul maybe we change our minds 10 times a day it's a very difficult city then it's a very difficult complicated city and we also say there's no such city in the world so it is very particular part of the life so it's like a strategy that i've used in my movies one one weaver from the video said so is it always a gray skies why is it always depressive yeah I, it was not something we planned well we shot the documentary in three different periods and well that was the weather that we had but sometimes we have seen sunshine early in the morning well it was i was full of hope well it was just based off having a relation with the movie it's not just one unique feeling Hi, I live in Seven Hills. I live in Balat district. When we listen to it from the author, it's a city of fairy tales, especially from the authors of uh, that times. There is Agob. Agob talks about this place. Well, when I read Agob, I felt that it was like a fairy tale. Well, in that sense, uh, Istanbul, as mentioned in the movie, uh, it was a place of full of gardens, full of nuts gardens, full of fruit gardens. It is such a place. But in this movie, we see that a very fast transformation of Istanbul. We cannot see that part. Also, we see something that's lost from Istanbul old Istanbul, non-Muslim. In each part they talk about non-Muslims and some districts are only consist of non-Muslims. Today in Istanbul we cannot see that. In the narrative of that period, in narrative of today, we see something that has been disappearing. Was it difficult let me let me just give you my own answer for example these fruit gardens vegetable gardens so it's not just that i know about this agricultural cultivating but seeing a city farm city farm some uh, place a terrain that people are working for 700 years is, is in itself is a romantic idea but it is very realistic we have in Istanbul Yedikule city farms and people are cultivating and finding means to survive with the families of course you know this area where well I didn't know I didn't know that they didn't have this cultivation potential well now they're fighting for this city farms when I entered the area it was for me it was like a loss of time timeless place maybe it is a very poetic part something that we see in the books in one of these places was these uh, farms when you walk in a, these lettuce for example I was emotional when I saw these lettuce. It was very emotional. Agop Baronian. It is about the districts of Istanbul in 19th century. It's also very interesting. In 19th century, we can see that the Comergian's book, you see it was just 2,200 years later. We see another description of Istanbul. In that sense, of course, I'm not... 
I'm not comparing myself to any other person. So as a note for future, it's something that impacts me a lot. So thank you so much for bringing that up. Well, for me, it is very poetic. I believe that there are magical poetic places. There are places that I want to go back. Um, well, sometimes when I feel depressed, I always went back to the city gardens. I went to city farms. So it was my one of my strategies. It was uh, <laughs> to maintain our mental health. Of course, that was one of my strategies that I followed. Well, maybe in the beginning, these documentaries, when you are shooting documentaries, maybe you can say, from all of a sudden, you, can, you cannot just proceed to shoot all of a sudden when you talk about Istanbul. There is a disadvantage. You, it's very complicated. It is very expensive maybe also it is interesting like a Istanbul documentary from Turkey we couldn't find any funds from Turkey and this documentary uh, was facilitated by the resources of other countries. So this amazes me each and every time I think about it. So these are very limited resources, of course, but when we talk about shooting in Istanbul, some places are politically unwanted places. They do not want cameras. Um, some places are very inviting please do shoot in those places and in those places of course you have to pay the price of shooting in those areas in terms of budget it's costly or maybe they're under some type of protections um, so you have to secure your own camera person own production team but you cannot protect protect yourself, but you have to encounter people from native the native to these neighborhoods in all these process city farms play a crucial role in terms of romanticism as well as production. Uh, in terms of production. It is an area you, where you can go freely and easily. Uh, you can turn back to that place. Of course, there is this Kumkapa district, Kumkapa adventure that I always talk about. Kumkapa is a place that has to be. It's a very different layer. It has very different root, very different layer. It is in that root. It has to be there. Our director wants to shoot there. But we cannot we cannot get any any permission because they have this immigration bureau for any other political reasons we cannot enter that area. I always think about this, all this production area. Of course, the most complicated park, uh, part was um, shooting in Gezi Park and in Kumkapu district. Physically, we have been attacked and our requires of camera were erased. Uh, well, we used other direct and maybe we entered from that area from that area well we have survived some other places continue 
Within all these aesthetic choices, we can see the production in Istanbul. It has a price. Well, as you say, Kumkapı was an answer. We talk about a very multicultural life. In Kumkapı, there are people from different nationalities. If you go, you see that that's another universe. It's very inspiring. It is. It is very inspiring. It's admirable, but for immigration bureau, for another other reasons, uh, it's very politized, and so there was this palace of Byzantine emperor. So what can we get? So. The district next to Balad is very complicated. So it's really important. Sometimes you cannot uh, do it at once. You have to revisit, you have to write it down, you have to know the place. So research plays a crucial role. Thank you. That was a very long answer, I'm sorry. Well, maybe we can also talk about the movie of the the name of the movie. It also makes a reference to out of Yilmaz movie, Beautiful Istanbul. It was the beginning of the sixties, so they are taking a look at Istanbul with a loss, sensation of loss and grief and something that is felt. Now I can see that they are feeling, they have been feeling it in the beginning of the 60s. That's a very feature movie. That feature is this. So for the choice of this name of the movie, maybe we can talk also, maybe we can talk about the reference on Yeshilcham, uh, all these movies, um, Something that we see, uh, all of these, there are references. Where do these movies stand? We're always, I'm sure, I'm sure you have thought about all these details. That's one of my questions. Well, well, I can say that I can live in this movie. I can live with this movie the rest of my life. Well, some, that's something else in terms of cinema, in terms of movies. We made some... Um, screening, we made some analysis. You see just the tiny part. Prumio, the cameraman of the Lumiere brothers, it was one of the first images that they shot. Uh, it is 1970s, just, just last, uh, just after um, the invention of cinema. You can see it's like Kumurjian's gaze. It was a different version of Kumurjian's gaze, Kumurjian's gaze from the boat. So it's a sliding camera. The first image of Istanbul is a sliding camera, sliding in the water. So it automatically is located uh, in the space relationship of this movie in Istanbul, so we can also enrich this. Uh, so we can also see that in the 60s, Istanbul has different representations. Oh, beautiful Istanbul. This movie has a different place in our hearts. It's a, it's a milestone. It's like a fa uh, bidding a farewell to Istanbul. It's like a sub-genre in Yeshilcham movies it's one of these best examples on the other hand so it's the maybe out of Yilmaz version Omar Kavur has another version of all oh, beautiful Istanbul movie it is about a woman in Istanbul woman that is in Istanbul so it is important the story is about that woman well the combination of these two movies. So it was like a, the heart of melancholy. It was like um, it was like a place of 
loss. It was like a place of melancholy. Mujdar, that actress, uh, has this scene where she walks in a Galata tower. So it is just a place of melancholy and sadness. It is. It is coming this feeling of sadness. So that was the source of the for the name of the movie and thanks to the contributions of uh, Jamal Kafadar. So goes I Gozal, beautiful. It's like a relation. So Gozal is also in Azerian Turkish. It's it gives a sensation of being an another another um, language. So well, we said okay, let's put it this way. And let the audience decide. Well, we couldn't. We couldn't make this games, word games in English. We we didn't dare. Indeed. Well, let's talk. While we're talking about these world of references, well, flowing camera. Maybe we can make a reference to Florian. Florian. Well, let's talk about Florian in from the context of. Um, multi-layerness of this movie. Of course, they are connected, interconnected, intertwined, but without being intertwined. They can exist without being connected to each other. So a camera person can act as they wish without, without narrative or meaning or information directing the camera. It is free. It's just flowing. It is navigating its own way, its own path, as a soul, as a spirit. Well, is it something that you deliberately decided? Or, um, well, my reference was in all this heritage, of course, when the movie starts first, well, the, but we see the big boats, big ships, and I felt that I was at the end of a place where it, where the life ends, where the life ends, and I asked Florineren, is the director, art director of this movie. So let's talk about this point of view of the camera. Maybe you know Reha Erdem's Hayat Var movie. Well. Florian and is known as Reha Erdem's visual art director. I didn't know that Florian made these uh, documentaries also because we had these limitations, budget limitations. We didn't have this access to the cameras they wanted. What? How many? Yeah, we have. I believe we have five different cameras. Well, one of them we could rent just three days, five days. We had 16 millimeters, etc. So, in that sense, Florian was like our playmate. They, Florian brings a gimbal. We try that. Maybe it's like jumping, and then, well, we try something else. So it's like. We tried a great variety of things. Between art directors, there is a fetish of these devices. Sometimes you have to accept that you can shoot, you can do it. So Florian has this aesthetic consciousness. But for me, the emphasis should be about, as Asla well knows, it's always talking with producers because I'm the I'm the one asking and Asta is the one who's not giving. For me, Florence magic was using five different cameras, different gimbals, drones, everything. This is this has a better lens, this is cheaper, this is that. So it Florin was a playmate for us. So that was our relationship with the visual art director uh, on paper maybe it's good but maybe when you go on the set no they say i only use that art only this hits my light of course we see the limitations so the best thing in the creative process uh, i always call it productive flexibility 
Productive flexibility was very rewarding. It was very rewarding to work with. Florian, any other questions, please? We still have time. 15 minutes. Well, let's wrap up. I have in my notes, so it is this story, the real story is the story that uh, you find behind the things that you think you know. But for the last two days, all that we have to, it's like an excuse to all the things that we do here. So it's an honor to close this session with this indeed so what is behind the product what is behind the product we are looking for it but we know we can't find but we're still looking for it thank you so much for being part of this session thank you for the movie also a general closing remark if you let me We have been here for the last two days. We, as a cinema foundation, cinema association, from subtitles movie. Thank you so much for your participation. So the first and the biggest gratitude goes to Nazi Janatze team from Maruf team. Thank you so much to the technical team and thank you to our translators. And last but not the least. Uh, I would like to thank Ayça Shifti Yetkin Mora in person. Thanks to them, we are here and we have been talking about this. That's it, thank you.